So if you take a look at the folder in front of you, you will see many facts that are enlightening about our current situation. Okay. Hey, it's me, Justin Comer. The show's called I Hear, I See Radio. You're listening to KRUI in Iowa City, 89.7 FM on your radio, and KRUI.FM to stream online. Uh, I have a guest. I have, I have a guest and a half guest today. I'm going to turn the mics on one at a time. Hi. Hey, who are you? I'm Michelle Guild. Hey, hey. we've heard you on here before. Oh my gosh. Welcome back. Hey, it's great to be here. And next... Hi, I'm Emily Duncan. Hi, oh, Emily. I hope I'm the half guest. No, you're the, that, you're no, the full the guest. guest. <laughs> Michelle's a half guest because she's been on the show before. Yeah, and we're, I don't count. Everyone's heard her before. Yeah. Nothing new there. <laughs> but, but Emily uh, was a student of mine back when I was uh, TA for music theory here at the university. That's how we know each other. Uh, where do you live now, Emily? I live in New York, up in Manhattan. Wow, that's far from oh. here. Yeah. <laughs> has, it, has it changed you? Oh, I have realized actually that when I come home, I'm a much more patient driver. <laughs> You'd think it would be the opposite, but now I'm just like, yeah, you go ahead in the in the four way stop, and I wait for every bicycle <laughs> because that's, that's everybody safe and smart. like tries to run you down in New York. <laughs> so this this is my like random act of kindness, paying it forward. <laughs> It's changed you for the better, then. That's, yeah. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what are you doing back in town? I came home. It was my mom's birthday on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. So I came home. And then my brother is going to start at the U in the fall. He's a trumpet player. Oh, great. So we got him uh, some stuff for his dorm and schooled him on what classes to pick. So yeah. he wouldn't pick any duds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we started the show, we were talking about your dad's love of KRUI. Are your parents listening today? I think so. Okay, yeah. so uh, hello, Emily's parents. And happy birthday, Emily's mom. Yes, thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully hopefully you enjoy the show that we have today with your daughter. So uh, what are you doing in New York? Uh, so I just finished school. I went there for grad school. Um, and now I do a whole bunch of different things. So... I'm a freelance musician. I play a lot of weird flute stuff. I do a lot of theater. Um, Yeah, and I work for uh, an audio social media company, so I get to work in a recording studio and do... Oh, that's fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's really cool. And they let me practice there, so I'm not going to get evicted by my neighbors. (laughs) Excellent. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, and then um, I'm going to start teaching for uh, a theater company down in the theater district starting in September, so... Nice. Yeah, it's varied. But it's, what kind of teaching would you be doing there? I'm going to teach uh, sound design. Oh, all right. Yeah, my That's fun. yeah my audition process was very odd. It was a very long interview process, and the final step of it was uh, I had to do a demo lesson. So I recut scenes from Jurassic Park, like the kitchen one, the really famous <laughs> kitchen one. Yeah. Uh, and there's like no talking in that scene, and so we watched it, and then I put it on mute, and everybody had to recreate all the dinosaur sounds oh, wow. from Whoa. all these things that I brought. So I had like cookie sheets, oh, that's sweet. So you're doing bags and chips and stuff, and they had to, yeah, they had to make all the sounds. You're doing like a foley sound. Thing. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. It was a lot of fun, but that, yeah, that would be the kind of teaching that I do. Nice. That sounds really fun. Uh, before we get too far into the show, I do have an apology to make to you, Emily. Uh, I forgot you were coming on the show. (laughs) So, yeah, I remember talking to you a few weeks ago that you said you were going to be in town. And I said, oh, great. You'll be on the show on this date. And then I never wrote it down. So uh, I wasn't ready for this Mm -hmm. until you messaged me yesterday. (laughs) It's like a ninja. (laughs) Yes. Thank you for reminding me you were coming on the show (laughs) before today. Oh, man. Yeah. So sorry about that. But but I think we're going to have a good time anyway. Yeah. It should be a lot of fun. I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, Michelle, how was your weekend? It was, it was great. Yeah. I didn't really do anything. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you you went somewhere Friday night, right? <laughs> do you want me to tell the yeah. story? <laughs> yeah, do it. Only tell what you're comfortable telling. <laughs> okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, my mom is really paranoid about me not being close to her. She lives in Des Moines. And so it's still pretty close. It's yeah, very it's close. We're talking, that far. We're talking a, to someone that lives in New York. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very, very drivable distance in a night, which I found 
quite frequently happening because my mom has been having these really terrible dreams where I die. And so she she will text me constantly and call me. And if I don't answer, she'll text me and say she's calling the police. (laughs) (laughs) Her last dream. (laughs) It's so bad. Her last dream was that we were driving. I was driving behind her, following her to a car parking garage. And we got to the top and parked. And I got out of the car and went to her car. And I was holding like a a tray of ice cream Uh and I handed it to her and I said, here, can you hold this? And she's like, sure. And then I jumped off. (laughs) 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 And that was why I had to go home on Friday. (laughs) So she just called it and was like, you have to come home. (laughs) To prove that I wasn't dead. (laughs) Yeah. But I'm curious. So, so you have to prove that you're not dead, but does she not believe that you're the one texting her back? (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Just, I think she thinks like the more time I spend with her, the less chance I have to die. That's like, yeah, yeah. That's all I can think. But I came home like the next morning because I was like, I don't have anything to do here. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I here? So you just spent the night and then drove right. Yeah. Back. Wow. Yeah. So that's how my weekend went. You could have died at any point after you. I left. know she's making me drive, which is the most dangerous oh, right. thing yeah. anyone could do. Yeah, I guess. But so. as long as it's like. Towards her, it's, it's you're getting safer as you go. <laughs> right. Yeah. The closer I am, the safer I am. Yeah. So I guess that raises the subject. Uh, how are your parents doing with you living so far away, Emily? They're good. I actually, uh, we've been racking up the frequent flyer miles, which is great. <laughs> uh, but I get to come home fairly often, which is great. Um, but I mean, my brother's heartbroken that he has to come and visit New York City. Oh, yeah. And eat all the New York food. So <laughs> they come and visit pretty often, too. But, nice. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's It took some adjusting. There's definitely like a beat down period in mm. New York City where the first yeah, year yeah, you're yeah. just like, yeah, get your face shoved into the pavement a couple times by <laughs> life and then you figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. So it's much better now. But I live uh, I live up in Washington Heights, uh, just like the musical in the Heights. It's pretty great. Um, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's pretty great. It's pretty residential. I live next to a park. So there's actual like vegetation is visible and you see families so it's not yeah it's it's different than here but at least that part of town isn't super different yeah than living like downtown iowa city right it's great so uh you already told the people that you play the flute right yeah okay i haven't been taking notes of what we've talked about already but uh, <laughs> uh so at some point on today's show we're gonna have you play live in the studio yeah uh so why don't you tell us what you brought in that you you're going to play later. Sure. Uh, so it's this new piece that I'm working on. Uh, my friend, he d- just graduated from you and I. Uh, he's an L.A. based flutist named Azim Ward. Uh, he's he's pretty funny. We've been friends for a while and, and he got famous when he made his uh, graduation recital a public event on Facebook instead of a private event. <laughs> and a whole bunch of people from Europe RSVP'd to go and, and it like blew up in London wow. and all these people were like who is Azim and why am I going to his graduation recital but a whole bunch of them showed up they was, actually showed up oh they like totally showed up it was nuts wow and when was this it was uh, I think it was like two years ago now it was a while ago wow Whoa. yeah but he and he's the chillest guy and so they everybody was like Azim like BuzzFeed interviewed him it was so weird and they were like Azim like what do you think and he was just like I, I don't know. <laughs> People are coming, I guess. But they had to do a live stream of it, and they had to get a bigger haul. It was crazy. Whoa. Oh, man, that's great. Uh, but he is uh, doing more composing and producing uh, recently. So this is uh, from his new beatbox flute suite. Cool. Is there a title yeah. to that piece? I think it's just called, yeah, the suite for beatbox flute. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, let's uh let's plan on playing that after I do the PSA in five minutes, okay? Neat. Does that sound Sounds good? good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh yeah, so I guess um we can talk about what was school like? What school did you go to in New York? I, I don't to think Juilliard. we were specific. Yeah, you went to Juilliard. Yeah. And uh so how was that? Just tell us everything that you remember. <laughs> <laughs> Starting from okay. day one. Yeah. Day one. Okay. <laughs> um well, let's see. Uh so I showed up and I can count on one hand the number of people that also went to public school for undergrad. Mm. So we all made best friends with each other because everybody else was like conservatory people, like oh, really? pre-college like people. Yeah, yeah, like studied real seriously since age four. And I was a late comer 
to flute. I started in sixth grade, mm-hmm. uh, and then I took a year off. Oh wow! I quit for a while. <laughs> yeah, but then um, when did you quit? When did I quit? Yeah, what year was that? Oh, it was uh, it was seventh grade. Okay, so it was one year off. One year off, and then I came back here, and because it was because we moved, oh, I my see. mom, uh, I didn't like my band director from where I was, so I quit. And then when we moved here, my mom said, you don't have an excuse <laughs> to not be in band anymore, so you have to join band again. <laughs> yeah, so you must have liked the new one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where did you live before here? Texas. Oh, okay. I had no idea about that. Yeah, we moved around a lot when I was a kid. I'm originally from Cambridge, Massachusetts, and then we moved to St. Louis, and then Dallas. Oh, okay. So then, lots of moving. Yeah, yeah. lots of places. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Iowa, and then now New York. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, so school is great. We we uh, we all bonded, all the public school kids. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was really cool. I, I went there for my teacher. Uh, I studied with Carol Winsense, who's, uh, she's a solo and chamber musician. But she's great, and she really encourages people to be weird. I do not fall into the orchestral classical music category, and so she was... Yeah, that's, yeah. that's why we get along. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, yeah. I, I think the, the Center for New Music, yeah did that to me and i'm forever grateful because yeah. it, it's been much more much more of an exciting ride than it would have been otherwise i think but yeah, yeah so we'll she give, was great uh, we'll give david gomper credit for that yes 100 <laughs> percent credit to dr gomper <laughs> yeah uh how long did you take at juilliard uh two years so i okay. did a master's degree yeah 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 and it was great my uh my first year i still kind of felt like i should give like an orchestral career, a good go, just because I was spending all this money to go to this New York school, and that's what they told me I should be doing. And then my second year, I was like, nah, let's just, yeah, let's just torch that plan. We'll, <laughs> we'll go and do it, what's actually exciting me. Yeah. Um, so I did a lot more new music. I got into uh, more of the production side of things. Um, yeah, and I started doing a lot of theater in the town. So I did, um, I was in this off-Broadway show back in March, where I was a beatboxing and Irish flute playing train conductor. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have to dance, which is great because I'm a terrible dancer, but I, I had to play the flute and I was in costume. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. And I had a line. Oh, okay. So oh, I, yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask yes. if this was like a legit I had a line. My, my one line was, and we've been waiting a long time. I'm still waiting for my Tony. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what's the show called? Come on, no. it was called the Signature Project. It was really cool. It started out; it's twenty five years in the making. This oh, thing, okay. and it's still not finished. Um, but it it started as just a work of visual art by this famous Irish painter uh, named Patrick Dunning, and he's really famous for taking this big piece of like bed sheet, basically, and he strung it along this bridge in Dublin, and he painted half of an eye on it, and so at like the very break of dawn when the water is really still under the bridge it makes an eye oh with the reflection. yeah with yeah, the yeah. reflection in the water so he does that kind of stuff and so this this uh, project that he had been working on called the signature project he made this canvas 25 years ago and it has a heart in the middle and like a bird and the earth and like it's very very hippie 70s it's very pretty uh but then he blew it up so it was three stories long and two stories high and he travels around uh, the country and abroad, and he's repainting it with the signatures of over a million people. Okay. So people come up <laughs> with these different colored paints, and they they paint their name onto this canvas in these little tiny squares, and it creates the painting all over again. Oh, neat. Yeah, but this was cool. So it started off as just him with these big canvases saying, like, put a dollar in this can and sign this canvas, and people started to be like, what am I signing? Because <laughs> everybody's yeah. really suspicious, <laughs> yeah. especially out east. And so it started, then it kind of morphed into uh, a piece of visual art and storytelling. And then it turned into uh, his brother's uh, an Irish flutist. And so then it turned to, into some of his brother's music and the storytelling. And then over the years, it became more and more theatrical. And this was the first time that they had mounted it in a theater as a play with like full music. There was Irish dance in it. Not by me. <laughs> <laughs> by trained professionals. But they had music and Irish dance and poetry and... Yeah, all all these other kinds of things. He does these uh, these pieces of art with tape balls. So he makes these balls of gaff tape, and then he makes like Elizabeth Taylor's eye out of them. So he did that. Yeah. So it was very involved. It was a lot of fun. So that's the kind of work that I do now. Yeah, that's a big sprawling project. <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah. Yeah. It was huge, and they put it together really quickly. Like we had about half of a month of rehearsal, and then we had a month of shows. Yeah. 
so you said he's he's aiming at uh, a million signatures yeah and that's that's still in progress oh yeah he's only got he's only got like an eighth of it done oh geez he's got a ways to go yeah Yeah. okay well i uh it's 4 15 now which means i have to play a public service announcement let's do it yeah so there's a it's kind of randomized so we don't know what we're gonna get until i click on it so uh let's let's see what we get and after that we'll have you play the beatbox all right so uh get that ready while i play this (laughs) One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. Okay, so now we're going to get to hear some uh, some of Emily's flute playing. This is some beatbox. Uh, tell me the composer's name again. This is uh, by Azim Ward, and it's the beatbox flute suite. Azim Ward, okay. Yeah. Nice. That was like a uh, little snippet of it, but yeah, it's three movements. This is the first movement called Pursuit, and then there's like this. It's like a little classical ode in the middle, which is really gorgeous. And then (laughs) that's uh, so fun. It's it's I love that. Yeah. Have you heard flute beatbox before, Michelle? No. It's a how common would you say it is, Emily? I've seen a quite a bit of it. Yeah, it's it's pretty. I mean, people have been putting it into music in in smaller chunks for a while. Yeah. Um, Mm. but not as this full beatbox flute as a different instrument kind of thing um, until very recently. So Greg Patillo, yeah, Greg Patillo is really the first person to make it really famous. He's the guy on YouTube. You can go search him and he does like beatbox flute, Super Mario and beatbox (laughs) gadget. And he wrote like the first big beatbox flute, like quote unquote classical piece of music. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Michelle's yeah, headphones become... keep falling off. <laughs> well, I, I chose a bad hairstyle today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, my headphones keep falling off. Or they would have been like slipping yeah. right off. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's become more common. Um, it's not something that people really get trained in, though. And so it's right. really more like people kind of get drawn to it and then they kind of have to figure it out for themselves. But yeah, it's becoming more and more commonplace. Yeah. Is this something that you have done before this piece? Yeah, yeah, I did. um it was like one of our last studio recitals. I played uh, a piece that Greg Patillo had written, which is like all beatbox flute, three movements. That one's pretty cool. It's like... Uh so it like kind of grooves and then you get like the... And it like turns into this big like drum so cool. kick. Fill. It's pretty fun. Uh, yeah. So I played that one and then... I do a lot of beatbox flute improvisation for pieces. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, and that's more like with composer, with uh, directors, like theater artists, um, figuring out what they want for their show, and then we kind of make music up. Or I I read lead sheets a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, My mom is a church music director, so growing up, she like beat into me transposition and reading lead sheets, and (laughs) it's coming in like super handy now. So A A plus for her. (laughs) But yeah, so a lot of improvisatory stuff, and then composers are starting to write more and more of these types of pieces which is great have you done radio before emily no this is my first time okay okay uh michelle i wanted to uh subtly give you a chance to plug your show but i'm just gonna be blunt about it so tell the world about your show (laughs) yeah so i have a podcast it's called welcome to my show i know it's such a great name for a podcast (laughs) i love it that's great (laughs) but uh yeah there's not really a main like topic or anything it's just my own show it's all mine and i do what i want yeah (laughs) what kinds of stuff do you talk about is it like a talk type show? um i've been trying to have guests on it so i'll have a guest each episode and kind of interview them i make them choose what they're an expert at because sometimes they're not like a professional at anything that's fun yeah so my next two episodes are going to be with my friend that i used to work on another podcast with eli and he's a expert in quotes, on plants. So I ask him a lot of questions about plants. And I think we learned some pretty valuable things about plants this week. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Yeah. Previous episodes have featured uh, 
the Illuminati. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Um, a guy yeah. talking about video games. Mm-hmm. Your mom. My mom was my first guest. Uh, your brother was another one. Yep. yep. Is that all of them so far? Uh, yeah, I think so. I yeah. think I, I just started it. So cool. It's That's new. awesome. Well, it's yeah. a new project. Yeah. It's yeah. Fun. I'm going to go find that Illuminati episode. I love a good conspiracy theory. Oh, it I is, almost joined. It's pretty interesting. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. That was my last. I think that was my last episode that I released. I think episode four yeah. was the Illuminati one. That's so, yeah, awesome. I should check it out. It's pretty, pretty good. Are they on like Apple? <laughs> yeah. Cool. Apple, Google, apps, podcast apps. I don't know where people find podcasts these days. Yeah, it's days. on SoundCloud. Yeah. So yeah, check that out. What are your plans for the future with that? (laughs) Who else is going to be on it? What guests do you have lined up? (laughs) Oh, uh, well, you, you are going to be a guest on it, right? Sure. (laughs) (laughs) Is that what you were hinting at? Yeah, I'm just trying to get you to invite (laughs) me. I haven't, haven't I invited you? Probably, but I want to invite me again. Now you've done it in front of a whole bunch of right. right. I haven't like set a day that we would record, so it's in the future. uh, When? Um, in two weeks. Okay, cool. Let's okay. do it. Cool. <laughs> All right, thanks. I uh, bullied you into that, so that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now you can't take it back. No, take it No, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. So, Emily, we've talked a little bit about your time at Juilliard. Uh, let's go back, like, as far as we can. What's your first memory of playing, like, a band concert? Ooh, okay. Um, well, I got into flute playing uh, because I wanted to be a singer, and my mom... Uh, who's a musician, said that the best singers play an instrument. So if I really was serious about singing, then I should play an instrument. I picked the flute. We had one at home. Uh, And, like, I cheated a little, and I started to, like, self-teach before I got to school. Mm -hmm. Um, But in Texas, it's really interesting because uh, it's it's great. And I haven't seen any other part of the country do this in any of my travels um, or teaching experience. But they start you in sixth grade, so you're a little older. And for an entire year, you just go to flute class. So every day for an hour, I would have flute class with a theory teacher and a professional flute player. Hmm. And they would teach us all the music theory we needed and all of our fingerings, all of our scales, all of that jazz. And you just play with other flute players. You get a really solid music theory foundation. And then the next year you join band. And it really works. The theory is that, you know, you take a year of just study on your instrument and then the band director has to spend less time being like, flutes, let's all stop and I'll teach you what this fingering should be. or thing. So you can actually make more music. Yeah, and it, yeah. and it really works. Like the bands, I mean, in Texas bands compete all the time. They're a really big deal. Like yeah, band is a big thing. Yeah, they're as, big as, yeah. they're as big as football, if not bigger. Like mm-hmm. in Texas, it's crazy. Um, but I remember the first time I played in band, we played Pirates of the Caribbean because that was <laughs> all the rage back then <laughs> uh i think it was like right around the time that incredible started to be a big thing too like every band played either parts of the caribbean or the incredibles um and our band director uh, she made us go around and every instrument had to do something embarrassing so the uh the oboists had to crow on their reed and make that really like high duck noise <laughs> and the brass people had to do like that really slow vibration so it just sounds like a big fart and we had to play (laughs) hot cross buns on our head joints because if you take the flute apart you can still play it and make different notes if you put your finger inside yeah right right yeah so we we had to do that that's yeah yeah. and i remember maybe maybe do that now oh yeah sure (laughs) so this is what that sounds like when you're playing playing the head joint and using your finger to change the tuning And then there's, I guess I should have played hot cross buns because you can't play it high. No, but yeah, so that's yeah. My, uh, my my master's teacher would be so proud of me. Yeah, thank you for doing that. <laughs> Killing it. Killing that was beautiful. Yeah. So, and I remember doing that. And as I was doing it, I looked up. Um, I think my dad was out of town or something, but my mom was there, and she sat at like the very back of the gym. And as we were doing like all of this junk, and it took forever, my mom rolled up her program and started miming like. Like stabbing herself to get out of living. It was so funny. Oh man. Yeah. She's always been a really great sport. Both my parents have been great sports. Yeah. My mom came to like every little concert when I was younger and my dad um take took me to like every competition when I got older and started competing. But yeah, that's that's so that was my first band experience. <laughs> that's good that? and memorable, yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, it was a good time. What would you say? I'm gonna go 
entire career. So okay. from then till now, what is your favorite thing you've played? Ooh, this ever? Could, uh, I'm going to say, we'll do two different questions. Okay. What's your favorite piece that you've played? Ooh, okay. If I had to go classical, my favorite piece of music is Prokofiev's Romeo and Juliet, okay. the ballet suite. Yeah, there's good flute stuff in there. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so great. And there's a saxophone in it, which is yeah. a good time. Yeah, Prokofiev liked his sax. Yeah, which you would you would appreciate. One of the first, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. That was my favorite. That was at a summer festival. I think that was at Sewanee Summer Music Festival, which is down in Tennessee. Cool. Yeah. So that's your favorite classical piece. What yeah. about something a little more experimental? Hmm, okay, let's see. We did this really cool. I did a concert uh, really recently, um, and we did it at MoMA, which nice. is the, the Museum of Modern Art out in Manhattan. And we did it outside in the sculpture garden. And it, it was so funny. So uh, the, all the sculptures out there, they had like a tiny giraffe in these bushes. It was weird. And then a huge rose that was as tall as a building. And then like directly in front of where we were playing was this yellow, like neon yellow Virgin Mary. <laughs> And I sent pictures of the Virgin Mary home because I was like, "This Mary's checking us out. Like, it was actually a little unnerving because she's like staring oh into your soul. She's like facing you. And everybody back in Iowa thought that it was a butter sculpture <laughs> because, of, because of the fair. And, and nobody, nobody in New York understood because I was like, oh, everybody back home thinks this is a butter sculpture. And then I had to go on and explain about the butter cow right. and like the butter celebrity. So like the butter Michael Jackson. And, uh, yeah. And people were very intrigued. But uh, so that was a lot of fun. That was all contemporary music. Um, and we played this piece called Ah Sibyl which was uh, for singer and then a group of, of instruments. It was flute, violin, cello, piano, percussion, and clarinet. Uh, and, and there were these gorgeous poems. Um, and then there were, there were parts where the instrumentalist had, had to whisper these words from the poem, so everybody had to be like, cricket. <laughs> and the, the pianist could never get to her mic because her mic was miking the strings inside the piano. Yeah. So she could never get to her mic to, to do her cricket. So she just kind of would half-heartedly lean over her piano and go, cricket, <laughs> and then get back down to start playing. And that, yeah, so that was a lot of fun. And the piece is really gorgeous. But yeah, that one was a lot of fun too. <laughs> Did you say who wrote that? Uh, that was James Pritch, Primush. James Primush. Cool. Yeah. Cool. He's really cool. He's, um, I think he's based out in Pennsylvania. Uh, yeah, but he teaches comp and, and he's a composer. He's pretty great. Good. Uh, do you maybe want to play another selection Ooh, from yeah, Azim's play, piece? I'll play some of this middle section. This one's called Romano. One of his other pieces was all cheeses. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so the, the, I don't remember what that one's called, but all of the movements were like cheddar and gouda and uh, I think like parmesan. And I don't, I don't know if this is a leftover title from that or if it's more like roman and greek but yeah this one's called romano and this is the middle movement this is the middle movement yeah so this one isn't so much beatbox but it's really gorgeous and it's almost time for the weather report if you want to get that ready get that ready Do 
That was movement two of Azim Ward's uh, flute yeah, suite. Yeah, uh, the suite for beatbox flute, and this one's called Romano, yeah. this movement. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. It's really pretty. He's great. He's really he's really cool, and he went to UNI. Mm-hmm. And he's in L.A. now, you said? Yeah, yeah, that's where he's from, um, is back out in California, so gotcha. after after Masters, he moved back. Yeah. It's, uh, it's time for the most exciting part of the show. Are you oh, ready, Michelle? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's hear it. All right. Today's weather forecast, currently 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Not bad. Not bad at all. It is cloudy, but it doesn't look like it's supposed to rain. So that's good, unless you like rain. And then I wouldn't I, mind I, some rain, honestly. I wouldn't either, but here's the fun part. I did some research. I know we're always really unsure about what the, what the direction on the wind how to means. read the wind part oh, of the weather. how to yeah, read yeah, the wind yeah. because yeah. right now the wind is north at 12 miles per hour mm-hmm. that means it's coming from the north at 12 miles per hour that's what that means decided yeah thank Deci- you internet. decided or that's the truth that's the truth <laughs> okay so, my yeah my eyes always glaze over when they start to say like winds out of wherever because i have right. no sense of direction i always assumed it was heading the direction right so when it's labeled north 12 miles per hour that means the wind itself is moving south. Exactly. Okay. Isn't that stupid? I guess. I, I don't know. Like, if you're giving someone directions, you say head north on, you know, interstate, yeah, yeah. whatever. That doesn't mean go south. It, you would say, <laughs> uh, come from the north. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know where I'm coming from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, if they just put, like, one more word there, it would. From north. Yeah, from north. Or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Because if you see north, be you're like, oh, it's northward. Yeah. This That's is a recurring subject yeah. on the show. But now it's settled. So I've I'm always, glad that I know now. I've yeah. refused to look it up. That's one more Jeopardy question I won't get wrong someday. Exactly. Yeah. So, I'm glad I know this. for sure now because I was always so unsure giving the weather reports. Mm-hmm. And now I'm confident. Speaking <laughs> of Jeopardy, uh, have either of you ever been on a game show? <laughs> no. <laughs> have I? No. That's a normal question to ask, right? Yeah. I actually like I have this hatred of Alex Trebek. Like, really? It's very irrational hatred. <laughs> but he's like if I could yeah, just pick one person that makes me the most irrationally angry, it's Alex Trebek and it's been this way for years. What but bothers you about him? I okay, so Alex Trebek, he's he speaks English and I don't know if he is fluent in any other language, but he likes to pretend that he is. <laughs> oh, so okay. he'll get on there and, and and he'll say algebra. He'll be like, yes, it's algebra. And he's done it before. <laughs> and he'll correct every single person that says a word with an incorrect accent. And he's so mean. Like we, But here's the thing is that I hate watch Jeopardy every day at 4 p.m. Because I love every Jeopardy. Day. But I hate Alex Trebek. <laughs> yeah, so I don't, I don't ever want him to stop hosting because Jeopardy won't be the same. But it's a total catch-22 because he makes me so furious. He's so condescending to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like I, that answer. I have dreams, though, of, like, getting on Jeopardy and just, like, cutting him off every time he tries to ex- <laughs> expound on the questions and answers and just be like, uh, same category, 200. Same category, 400. And just he never gets to talk. That would yeah. be the sweetest revenge of all. <laughs> <laughs> just don't give him a chance to show off. That's right, yeah. yeah. He gets to show off for no one that day. <laughs> Uh, wow. Okay. So Michelle, do you have any, <laughs> any extra, any, uh, favorite game shows? Um, what would gosh. you like to be on? I think that's a better way that's to a phrase question. that. Yeah. Have you guys ever watched lingo? No, what's that mm-hmm. one? It used to be, I don't know if it's still a thing, but it was on uh, game show network a long time ago. My cousins would make me watch it and it was <laughs> so good. It was basically, honestly, I don't even remember the premise of it. All I remember is they would draw like a bingo ball with a number on it. And then they'd have to hold it up to the camera and say the number that was on it. And that was like my favorite thing to watch because they'd have to, they'd take so much time to find a ball and then like to find the number, like turn it around so they could hold it up to the camera and just smile and be like 30. <laughs> and then they would just and sit there the, and smile. How is this part of the game? Yeah. Like what is Well, the, they had yeah. to like match numbers on their board to like answer. I think it was a trivia type. Question, I or, feel like I've seen parodies of this show. Probably, because it's really yeah. funny. So even just watching them pull the number of balls out was the only reason I watched it. Oh so they take forever for it's each just, ball. So yeah. that's like filling time on the show. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. 
Do you guys ever watch Competitive Spelling Bee? That's always fun. I have watched it. Uh, oh, yeah. It's always best to watch it in like a crowded restaurant, <laughs> 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 which is, yeah. Uh, it's happened more than once. I've been at a restaurant and they've been playing the spelling bee on the TVs. I don't know why. It's a big deal. It's on like ESPN 2 or 3 yeah. or something. No, are you serious? I'm yeah, talking yeah. like the local ones. They actually oh, put, you know, it, in person, they yeah. put it on like. The yeah, yeah. I've seen experience. the national ones oh, my broadcast on TV. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it's uh I was good at spelling as a kid, but I don't know that I am now. I was I was good at spelling, but I wasn't spelling be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe you're right. I don't know if I was that good. <laughs> yeah. I still always have to whenever I'm not using a keyboard because when I can do it on a keyboard it it looks right in my brain, but when I'm writing out the word weird, I have mm. to write it out both ways. And I majored oh, in yeah. English in undergrad. <laughs> From here, whoops. Yeah. But yeah, so <laughs> every time I have to write out the word weird, like in pencil or pen, I always have to spell it both ways. And then obviously like the E first way is correct. Yeah, it's W-E-I-R-D. Yeah, yeah. Yep. but it just looks weird. But it looks weird. weird. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have, that one gave me trouble when I was like really young, but then I got really into Weird Hell. So I had seen oh, yeah. it so many oh, times so that good. then it was drilled into my head. I love Weird Hell. Yeah, you're a fan? Oh, he's great. Have you uh, seen him live? No, I would oh, love really? to. It's pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen him like three or four times. <laughs> <laughs> Just recently, right? Was uh, the last one? Yeah, the last one was on his most recent tour. I don't remember how long ago that was, but I saw he, him in Des Moines. Like, was or is coming to Cedar Rapids or like around here, right? Uh, I saw him in Des Moines a few months ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's the one I'm thinking of. He came to Cedar Rapids in, I think, 2016. Were you there? I saw him then, too. Yeah. <laughs> 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 He's fun. And this most recent tour was really cool because he was doing like lesser known stuff from his albums. That's awesome. And it was like none of his parodies. It was all original stuff. Oh, really? Yeah, it was Like wild. Weasel Stomping Day and stuff? They didn't do that, but stuff like yeah. that, yes. Oh, Weasel Stomping Day is a classic. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> Forever in our heart. Are you a fan of Weird Al? Yeah, I am. Okay. I am. Right, cool. I used to be way more than I am now, yeah. but you know, everyone's a fan. Well, right? I don't know if that, that that's true, but... He's great. <laughs> he is great. I like Polka Face. Yeah. That one might be yeah. my favorite. That's good. It's like that. Yeah. The giant survey of all the hit songs from like the early 2000s, like mid 2000s. That one's great. Yeah. He does that on most albums where it's a, a polka medley of, yeah. of recent hits. Yeah. yeah good stuff. <laughs> uh, do you want to play maybe the last movie oh, of, neat. Let's of see. Azeem's piece? Let's see what we got in here. Is this a work in progress? I didn't ask that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm working cool. on this one. Um, I'm going to play it probably. Uh, I have two concerts coming up. One is in August, and then um, another one that's like just solo that's in October. Um, and so I'll probably play this at one of those. Mm-hmm. So this this one is uh, total work in progress. We have been talking back and forth this week um, to work on this guy. So cool. super new, but it'll be fun. Um, and we have plans to record uh, another one of his pieces later on like early fall late summer but yeah so this third movement is called rock side here's like a little snippet of the end eh? cool stuff where you like you're singing and playing at the same time it's just like yeah that's a cool effect yeah that sounds fun <laughs> that was one that you guys are always fond of composing yeah i like yeah. to write the that one humming the, while playing thing yeah pizzicato stuff that's so too. neat yeah. <laughs> this is like blowing my mind like i'm seeing a new art form being born that i didn't know existed <laughs> have you ever felt that before it's crazy it's a lot of fun i i do think like <laughs> It's a it's a total area of composition where there's a huge like bubble like there's there's nothing right now there's a couple of these pieces Azim is one that's writing, um, 
Greg Patillo, and then there's this flutist who's in London. He's a flute player and a composer named Ian Clark, and he's probably the most famous one. I played one. I play a lot of his pieces. They're my favorite. But <laughs> I played one on my senior recital here that was called Hatching Aliens. Mm. And it's like all this weird stuff where you like sing it into your flute and just like... <laughs> Like all that kind of weird <laughs> stuff. It was so fun. And you like, um, you make these like, like these alien noises. Um, but he does a lot of this kind of stuff too. Um, but yeah, other than that, like those are three of the ones that come straight to mind and there aren't a whole lot of people writing for yeah. this kind of thing. You mentioned that you plan on playing this at two concerts coming up. Uh, I yeah. assume those are in New York. Yeah, they're in New York. I'm I don't know that anyone in New York is listening to the show, but uh, if you want to plug those dates, now would be a good time yeah, to do it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm playing uh, It's this music benefit concert. Um, it's on August 15th, which will be pretty cool. Um, I'm going to play this, I think, and then um, some jazz music. I'm a big fan of uh, jazz flute, mm-hmm. Ron Burgundy. I have, <laughs> sure. I have the Ron Burgundy shirt. It, okay, so this is my dream this summer, is to transcribe the Ron Burgundy flute solo and then like perform it in full drag somewhere. <laughs> like That's my goal. Gotta get it done. So yeah, anyway, so I'm playing this piece <laughs> and a jazz piece um, in uh, August 15th, and then October 26th, I'm doing a recital, and it's going to be all Halloween type music. Ooh. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. My uh, my friend from the U, he graduated back in 2016 with me, um, but he was a composer, Alex Kane. Yeah, he wrote me a piece for my senior recital uh, that was based on Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven, mm-hmm. and I haven't had a chance to play it since then, so I'm going to break that one out. It's pretty cool. It's alto flute and spoken word. Nice. And it's got some of these types of effects in it. It's really, it's pretty sweet. But then, yeah, we're going to do some other Halloween type stuff. This, uh, uh, James Primush, who we talked about on the MoMA concert, um, sent me a score for this Bach piece, but it's for two flutes and it's offset by like a beat and a half. So it sounds very familiar, but kind of weird because it's, it's something that everybody recognizes and it's, it's just twisted a little bit. So that'll be great. So stuff like that. Um, and hoping to do some more. Halloween beatbox flute type stuff on it. Yeah. Do you own an alto flute? Yeah. Okay, cool. I may uh I may need to write something for that. For you, you totally <laughs> should. I play a lot of alto flute. I really like bass. the alto flute, but yeah. uh most of the times I've written for it I had to then just rewrite it for regular flute. <laughs> You totally should. That was my um, that was my graduation present for oh, cool. graduating from a master's degree, which is great. I play a lot of alto flute, um, and then when I graduated, I wouldn't get to use the school's instruments anymore. Right, of course. So <laughs> yeah, but I play. I like playing piccolo, but I prefer to play like the low alto flute and bass flute stuff. Mm-hmm. I assume you don't have a bass flute yet. Not yet. Okay. Soon. <laughs> Soon. Yeah, I'll. I'll uh, we should uh, work on something. Yeah, that'd It'll be, be great. Uh, I need to play a grant spot now, so let's let's see what we get. Support for KRUI is provided by Little Village. Little Village is Iowa City's independent, community-supported news and culture publication. Little Village's event calendar connects readers with critical cultural opportunities. Through journalism, essays, and events, Little Village works to improve our community according to core values, affordability and access, economic and labor justice, environmental sustainability, racial justice, gender equity, quality health care, quality education, and critical culture. Little Village can be found in print editions at local businesses in Iowa City as well as online at littlevillagemag.com. Yeah, Little Village, good stuff. You guys yeah, fans? Little Village. Oh, I'm the biggest fan of Little Village. <laughs> yep. Little Village reviewed a show that I did my sophomore year of college. I was in a community theater production of Cabaret. Mm-hmm. I was a, a Kit Kat dancer. I was I was always cast as either a nun or a loose woman in shows here. <laughs> no in between. Always, yes, no no in between. I know I can't swear. I was going to, yeah, I was going to use a different word. But yes, so I was always one of the two. Uh, and I am such a bad dancer. I know that I've alluded to, to this a couple times a show, but like I'm such a bad dancer. And that one was like full can-can, like full out dancing. And it took me like literally until the week before to learn all the dancing. Yeah. And my... I remembered it all. Like there was never a time where I forgot it. But my uh, crutch that I rely on for shows when I have to dance is that I just smile really big and yeah. just like stare directly into the audience so that they like don't look at my feet. <laughs> and Little Village was like, was like, oh, special standout dancers include. And they mentioned me as a special standout dancer. I was like, I fooled them. I fooled them with my red lipstick and my dead eyes. Yeah. <laughs> That's smart. <laughs> hey, speaking of lipstick. Uh, 
I realize we haven't talked about this at all, but I've seen a lot of pictures of you with a bunch of face paint on. Oh, yeah. So what's uh, what are you doing there? <laughs> so I have started working uh, on a new YouTube channel, and it's like brand new baby. But I do a lot of effects makeup. That's my other great love that I just kind of do as a hobby. But I've started to uh, use my arranging skills and production skills to make these videos where I do like full costume makeup and play flute in them. So the first one that I did was uh, a piece from The Corpse Bride, that Tim Burton movie. Yeah. And I dressed up like for the character. Did you dress up as a Corpse Bride character when you were going to school here? Yes. Okay, yeah, I, I was like full blue, <laughs> yeah. like the blue chick. And a lot of people didn't recognize me in the school of music and they were kind of freaked out. They were like, who is this person? Because yeah. I just like was sitting there. There were no practice rooms. I'm sure there still aren't to this day. But like I was practicing, waiting for a room and people were just kind of like walking by and they either wouldn't notice me or get really freaked out. <laughs> um, yeah, so I did. I did the Corpse Bride. I did um, the Johnny Depp character. And then I did um, the skeleton face the the bone jangles guy that sings like the uh tell you a story corpses of cheer lose those that one and then yeah. uh <laughs> then there's like this worm and that one i i like saran wrapped my whole head because i was too cheap to buy ball cap dangerous. yeah so i saran not like the whole like i still could my breathe like I, I just did like the uh the widow's peak backwards um with that like ultra strong saran wrap the kind that like makes a seal yeah uh, the press and seal press yeah. and seal is what it's called oh uh, and so i like i press and sealed my head and then i painted the whole thing green and like did that um but now i'm working on a cover of a song by the killers hmm. and i did uh this like geometric type of uh like it's kind of like when somebody that i used to know did their yeah. did their geometric designs but it's like more more colorful um i'm like everything's pink so that's one that I'm working on. It should be done later this month. But yeah, so that's something that I really want to start putting more time into. Yeah, where can uh, people find that YouTube channel? Yeah, it's right now it's called Forbidden Flute. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's cute. Yeah, Forbidden Flute <laughs> on YouTube. And yeah, it's a brand new baby channel. There's just the one video uploaded so far, but there will be another one coming and hopefully more on a regular schedule soon. But Yeah, I'll make sure to link that when I put this online. Sweet. <laughs> uh, okay, so... You did mention earlier in the show that you've been working on uh, improvisations with beatbox flute. Yeah. Is that something you'd be interested in doing now? Definitely. Let's do it. So okay. what's uh what have you done to practice doing this? Like what what's your uh what's your idea here? <laughs> Improvising. Uh, so I feel like such a scattering person being like, I do this thing and that thing. Like no, that's it's just good. yeah, it's yeah. like totally <laughs> that's the kind of career that I've always wanted. I get really bored doing one thing in one place. Yeah. Uh, so I like to have a variety and be working with all kinds of different artists and all kinds of different genres. Um, but it's something that's come about uh, through more of the theater stuff that I do. Um, the show that I just did, I just did a show in March and a show in May. And they both wanted some kind of beatbox flute thing at certain points. Mm -hmm. And they just were like, here are the chords figure something out and yeah. and it was uh it was pretty cool though. it was a lot of workshopping with like the band and with uh the music director so you've been improvising with other musicians yeah like soloing over a yeah solo something. and with okay. other people and it's, pre it's been pretty cool yeah the one uh the signature project there was a huge just beatbox flute solo and it was over it was over a track that had all of this other stuff going on at the same time and then accordion and violin it was a very odd mix of things, cool. but it, it worked. Yeah. Strangely. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have an accordion or a violin. I know it's us, a bummer, but, but yeah. So, um, yeah. So after that, I've just been, it's kind of like if I don't have any concerts to be preparing for, I just kind of mess around and that's how I practice is messing cool. around with beatbox flute type stuff. Nice. Yeah. Cool. All right. So yeah. Let's, let's hear what you got. Hot take improv. <laughs> <laughs>
just like spit all over the studio. Oh yeah, that's for which I apologize. But yeah, that's an occupational hazard. It's that's the like, nature of, of what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, be, it's just, yeah. It's always just like everybody's putting away their violin and their recording, and then yeah, just like this gnarled mess of spit. <laughs> it's a spitty medium. Yeah, <laughs> that's really neat. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. But yeah, that's um, that's something that I'm working more on. I'd like to start um, actually. I have been working for this couple that is friends with Greg Patillo, like the beatbox flute player. Yeah. Um, and so my my goal is to um, meet up with him and maybe take a couple lessons and see what he would have to offer in terms of like, this is how you craft beats and like what kind of style you would pick for this kind of song and all those kinds of things. Because he was somebody that could beatbox separately. Yeah. And then he put it with his flute um, and mine was more like beatboxing in the context of playing flute. So, right. yeah. So hopefully this year we'll get to meet up and it'll yeah. be amazing. Have you met him before or talked to him at all? No, okay. no. He was uh, the closest I ever got, which isn't even close at all because it <laughs> didn't involve his like physical body, was here. <laughs> we had to, uh, my professor here, Nicola Esposito, made us all write a report on our favorite flute player. And everybody was like, oh, the principal of the Berlin Philharmonic and the principal of the Metropolitan Opera. And I was like, my favorite's Greg Patillo, the beatbox flute player. <laughs> <laughs> and I did a whole report on him, which is a little stalkery. So I'm going to play it, you know, play it cool. Yeah. <laughs> when we meet in person. You can bring a printed out copy. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I wrote a report. I, I wrote this for you. <laughs> about I got an you, A that semester. Like five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think we're uh, getting pretty close to the end of the show. Uh, do you have anything you want to plug besides those dates and your YouTube channel? Ooh. Um, if you want to see the kinds of weird stuff that I'm working on, uh, my Instagram is also Forbidden Flute. Mm -hmm. And uh, that one is much more regularly updated with like theater things and weird makeup flute stuff and flute videos uh, of things that I'm working on for recital. And uh, it's got all the stuff on the shows that I'm playing for, like the off-Broadway and off-off-Broadway stuff. Um, yeah, so check that one out if you want to see some pictures and videos. Cool. I'll link the Instagram in the show description as well. Sweet. Uh, Michelle. What yeah. about you? What do you want to talk about? Oh, you know, just check out my podcast. It's called Welcome to My Show. Yeah. Where's uh, your favorite place where they can listen to that? Um, if you had to pick one. The best one is iTunes. Okay. Cool. In my opinion. But that's only because that's where I listen to it. So it's on iTunes and Google and just search for it. Yeah. I mean, it's, Do you listen to your own show it. after you release it? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I edit it. So yeah. I don't listen to it. Yeah, I, I expected you wouldn't, but no. the way you phrased that, I wasn't sure. Does the sound oh. of your own voice still weird you out? Because it still like weirds me yeah, out. Yeah. Like even still? just hearing it right now in the headphones weirds me out. Yeah. I. It took me a long time to get over that, but since I've been doing this every week, like I don't care anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that I enjoy my voice now it's more like i've just been numb to yeah it. you're desensitized yeah, yeah. To your own. yeah you lost the voicemail cringe yeah <laughs> yeah yeah okay so let me get through my uh, list of stuff real quick before we close the show uh i am playing a show this saturday the 28th this is a feed me weird things concert number seven of nice. the season uh i'll be opening for guitarist and improviser daniel weish from Chicago. Uh, my friend David Clare and I will be opening for him. That's at 9 p.m. at Trumpet Blossom. Again, that's Saturday, July 28th. And uh, something a little more happening today. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's <laughs> a good way to good phrase sentence. that, right? Uh, <laughs> so if you live in or around Cedar Rapids and you are looking for concert band concerts to listen to for free, uh, you can check out the Cedar Rapids Municipal Band. I run sound for them, so you'll be able to hear it for sure. Uh, tonight, they're at Beaver Park at 7.30, and then on Wednesday, the 25th, they'll be at Knoll Ridge Park. You can find their full schedule at crmuniband.org. You can come to the sound table and say hi to me if you want. I will be nice to you, I promise. Uh, <laughs> this week, I was going to do this last week, but we had to reschedule. This week, I'm going to be on another KRUI show called A Moment with Divine, hosted by Divine Huff. That's going to be this Thursday, the 26th at 5 p.m., you can find older episodes of her show on the SoundCloud page for KRUI. Uh, next week, we're going to be doing this at the same time, 4 p.m., 29th. Probably it'll be just music, no guests. I said that last week and I was lying. Sorry, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else do I have? Just the regular stuff. We have a website, IHearIC.com. 
At the bottom of the page, you'll find links to our Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube pages, as well as podcast links, because I record every episode of this radio show and put it online. And you can listen to it on iTunes, Google Play, Mixcloud, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. Uh, Also that YouTube page I already mentioned. Uh, And I put a bunch of links in every description for every show, which you should click on to find more (laughs) stuff. (laughs) If you listening have music you'd like us to hear or shows coming up that we should know about, or you want to play a show that we do coming up next month. Man, I'm doing bad today. Uh, (laughs) That's great. Keep going. Keep going. Carlos and I are working on the fall schedule for concerts. So we're, uh, yeah, he's in Spain right now. Otherwise he would be here. Sorry. Uh, we're working on the schedule for the fall, so soon we'll have the dates for that. And if you want to play, you should tell us. Uh, and the best way to do that is to email us at ihearic at gmail dot com. Okay, that's the end of my plugs. Nice. Uh, I stumbled over almost all of them this time. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Thanks for the the reassurance. Uh, do you guys uh, have any parting words? Ooh. It's been nice knowing you. Oh, that's ominous. <laughs> <laughs> Man, the Illuminati episode changed you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, anybody got a fun fact? Um, wow, wow I'm, I don't, I'm uh, out of knowledge. My, my fun, fun fact, fact is dead air. Do you have any fun facts? <laughs> my Emily? fun fact. Okay, so I was looking at this Facebook group called like Creepy Facts oh, yeah. on the plane. I've was, seen that actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was on the plane coming here and I cared enough that it looked suspicious <laughs> to think about it being suspicious, but mm-hmm. I didn't care enough to click away. So I was looking at weird creepy facts and one of the weird creepy facts was that like a couple decades ago, there was this huge power outage in LA and everybody freaked out because they saw these weird lights in the sky and they were like, like, oh my gosh, like the end of days. And it turned out that they had never seen the Milky Way before. <laughs> oh <laughs> no. <laughs> nice. All right. I think that's a good thing to sign off with. Uh, I'm going to play some music as we, as we leave the studio. This is uh, my friend, David Clare. I mentioned we're playing a show together on Saturday, so I thought I should play some of his music. This is from an album he released called The Shattered Dreams Variations, which I've played a couple examples of before if you've been listening to the show. This is track number five, or variation number five. It's actually track six on the album. Uh, This is called (laughs) The Future, dot, dot, dot. Not so...
listening to the University of Iowa's student-run radio, 89.7 FM. KRUI, Iowa City.